This video is sponsored by Portrait Mode, a dedicated photo sharing platform for street photography. This 35mm film camera cost me a total of £15 and I'm having some of the most fun with photography using it. Today we're going to be shooting some night photography using Cinesteel 800T. For those unfamiliar with this film stock, Cinesteel 800T provides a very unique but cinematic result and I've never used it before so I'm excited to share with you what I managed to get in this video. The very first thing I want to mention in this video is that gear absolutely does matter. If you use certain gear, you will get certain results. On top of that, the gear that you decide to use will also affect how much fun you have. If you're a working professional, this is less important. Obviously getting the job done is a priority and having fun is second to that. But for me, just making a YouTube video right now, having a good time is all that matters. And talking of having a good time, I was recently over the moon with some images I had taken on Cinesteel 50D. Every time I shoot film, I'm never normally that happy with the results. Now the process is fun, I'm much slower, and I'm more intentional, so the idea of film is great, I don't have any issues with it, except for when I get the photos developed. I always look at the role that I've shot and I think, nah, I could have done better, maybe next time. But this time around, after getting my first roll of Cinesteel 50D developed, I couldn't believe how sick they looked. So if I had that much fun unintentionally with Cinesteel 50D, why not try out the famous Cinesteel 800T? Combine that with a 15 pound camera and my lack of film experience, what could go wrong, right? We'll shoot this, Las Vegas. Aperture priority on this camera. ISO 800 is set. Probably gonna shoot, well, let's see how much light we've got. First shot, Cine still. Hopefully it's successful. Before I show you any more terribly average photography, let's talk about this 15 pound camera. This is the Canon EOS 300. It was released in 1999 as an entry level SLR and it also has an EF mount. As a Canon user for the last seven years, that means I can use any of my EF lenses on this body. And it makes me laugh a little bit, the fact that I'm gonna use a 16 to 35 L series lens. It's about 600, 700 pounds and I'm gonna stick it on a 15 pound body. But here we are. The EOS 300 includes priority modes and even autofocus. Loading film is easy as well, just pull the leader out and in place, close the back of the camera and you will see it automatically unwind your film ready to shoot. If this didn't take 35mm film, I think people would assume that this is just an old DSLR. It's a simple piece of kit and for someone like me who lacks film experience, simple is why I like it so much. Now the reason for it being so cheap actually surprises me a little bit because it's a very capable camera, but it doesn't look very good. And part of me is thinking, film hipsters will only buy a camera if it makes them look good. Now I am kind of joking when I say that, but aesthetics and using a camera that you think is cool is important, I do believe. And this is nothing cool about it really. It's, uh, yeah. In a world where film photography is gaining popularity, I think people want a more manual, tactile and slower experience. That's one of the pros about shooting film. It's totally different to shooting digital and like I've said, I'm way more intentional with my photography when I'm shooting film. That doesn't mean it's better or worse than digital, it's just a different experience. So maybe someone wouldn't want this camera because it just feels like a DSLR except it's film. Talking about the Canon AE-1 very quickly, this is more manual, this is more tactile, this feels more vintage, obviously it's older than the EOS 300. This was 200 pounds, 
this is 10, 15, 20 pounds. Now they both take the same film and I would argue you're gonna get a better shot out of this camera just because it requires less effort than this camera. If you have no film experience, this might be a little bit more difficult. It's not difficult, but it requires some thought, whereas this is just very automatic. So a 200 pound camera or a 15 pound camera, it's interesting because I think I would rather guarantee the getting the shot with this camera than this one. This one's more fun, but this is easier. So pros and cons. After a quick Google, prices range a little bit, but if you find the right deal, you can get your hands on a Canon EOS 300 for less than a single roll of Portra 400. All right, that's enough waffle about the camera. Let's now jump back to a very dark and cold night shooting along the seafront. If I wasn't shooting film, there's no way I'd be taking photos of an empty car park. But because it, I'm shooting cine still, I just feel like, <laughs> I don't know what I feel like. I'm just trying to be cool, I think. Sometimes mobile phone's all you need. Oh, this is sick. Candy floss is cool. It's a bit of a liminal space, really. Something so satisfying about pressing the shutter and you feel the photo being made. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like we shouldn't be in here? That's when, that is that optimum liminal space photography, when everything just feels really eerie. Just before I share some thoughts and opinions on that shoot and what I thought about some of those photos, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsors of this video, Portrait Mode. I've talked about Portrait Mode before on this channel and they are a dedicated street photography sharing platform. It's nice that they put the photographer and the creator first. As you can see, there is a featured page and even a photo of the day. Portrait Mode is photos only. So no ever-changing algorithm showing you short form video content, no cropping of your images, just dedicated focus on street photography. The app is currently being developed as well and it's in the closed beta version for Androids at the moment. And that should be rolled out by the end of the year. I'm over on portrait mode sharing some of my most recent work so if you're interested in signing up and checking out what's going on over there please do there's a link in the description. The final thing I want to mention and I've said this before on the channel but portrait mode seems to attract good photographers whereas if you go on Instagram for example and it's just everyone and anyone sharing street photography this isn't the case with portrait mode. It looks like decent actual street photos and it's refreshing to see. So like I said, link in the description if you wanna sign up and thanks to portrait mode for sponsoring this video. Discussing the photos in this video now, like I said in the car park, I wouldn't be shooting photos like this if it wasn't for cine still. And I think that's partly because of other photographers I've seen and other work I've seen on cine still. This kind of film just leans towards liminal spaces, especially nighttime photography, obviously 
but I had a lot of fun kind of taking photos of things that I wouldn't normally take photos of. I must confess something though, and I don't know if the film community will ever accept me as one of their own, but I did open some of the scans up in Lightroom and fix them. So I made some small adjustments like darkening the blacks, cropping and straightening some of my compositions. Now, honestly though, I don't think this is an issue. I think if you didn't nail it in camera, then we have permission to fix it in post, literally. And I don't think it matters what format of photography you're shooting in, whether it's digital or film, I think we have free range over our work to do as we will. So when I got the images back from them being developed, I did notice that the blacks were a little bit faded and some of my compositions were wonky. So I literally opened them up in Lightroom and just made some small adjustments. My favorite photo from this roll of Cine Steel was the stack of candy floss. Uh, first reason is just because that's not something you see every day. And I also love the fact that the lights were still on inside the shop, even though the shop was closed. And if liminal space photography was the goal with this shoot, then we achieved it with this image. Thanks again for the continued support on the channel. It really does mean a lot. We're rounding up the year now and I'm not sure how many more videos I'm gonna do in this month. I might just take it easy for a little bit. Regardless of what happens, thank you so much for a fantastic year on YouTube. And um, yeah, I will not be slowing down into 2023. I got some big things planned and yeah, it means a lot that you guys stick around and watch my videos and just listen to me waffle on about photography. So I appreciate every single one of you. I wanna say a big thank you to Dan Brooks for filming, uh, helping me film this video. Check out his Instagram page, he's a great photographer. I think you'll like some of his work. And yeah, that's it from me. Hit subscribe, road to 100,000 subscribers. We're on that path. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> peace.